The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Born on March 31, 1823 in Sumter District, Mary Boykin Miller Chestnut is best known for the extraordinary diary she kept during the American Civil War. The South, for too long, really was sort of regarded as a place without any culture, or as a place without really a strong sense of literature. The diary has been studied for many years as a point of history. It really is in uh, more recent times that Mary has come to be fully considered as a literary uh, person of some note. As the daughter of a prominent politician, young Mary received the kind of education that enabled her to thrive in the elite antebellum circles in which she would travel during her lifetime. In 1828, Mary's father was elected governor of South Carolina and two years later to the United States Senate. Mary Boykin Chestnut was certainly among the most privileged of Southern women at this time. She spent much of her life as a voracious reader. When James Chestnut Jr. proposed marriage, Mary accepted and the two became husband and wife in 1840. She married into one of the wealthiest uh, slaveholding families in the state. When South Carolina seceded from the Union in December 1860, Mary stood behind the Southern cause. For most of her life, she was against slavery, and here she was married to, you know, a slaveholder. But she was quite an ardent secessionist, as were most privileged Southerners. She understood something about the path that the country was headed down. Mary began keeping her diary in February 1861, and by way of her husband's prominent role in the new Confederacy, she became a witness to the critical events that unfolded as the southern states barreled headlong toward their fate. She wrote about everything, you know, she wrote about the generals, she wrote about the battles, she wrote about irritation with the government, she wrote about what was happening on the home front. It's just extraordinary uh, insights into what was going on during the Confederacy. She was in Alabama as the new Confederate government was formed, Charleston as artillery rained down upon the Union troops garrisoned at Fort Sumter, and Richmond when the Confederate government made the city its permanent home, recording her impressions and observations through it all. I remember feeling a nervous dread and horror of this break with so great a power as USA, but I was ready and willing she finds herself during the course of the war in the inner circle of the Southern Confederacy. That diary really opens your eyes. She was so outspoken and said so many times uh, her feelings about slavery and how wrong she felt it was. March 4th, 1861. So I have seen a Negro woman sold up on the block at auction. You know what the Bible says about slavery and marriage. Poor women. Poor slaves. Like many Southerners, James and Mary fell on hard times after the war. They lost almost everything. James Chestnut's slaves were freed, so the major investment of the family was gone. The plantations, of course, really could make almost no money. Mary uh, moves from the plantation property into Camden itself. She is very, very productive. In the years after the war, Mary Chestnut set about revising the diary she had kept, transforming it into the work we know today. She was able to give this um, diary almost sort of a novelistic approach. It's something that has evolved in our understanding. There's no doubt that Mary Chestnut is among the great American writers of her day. Mary Boykin Miller Chestnut died of a heart attack in 1886.